turned around in the lay in the chuck. And we're gonna do the same thing to the to the muzzle end. Uh, I'm gonna part this off a little bit long and then just machine it down to the uh, original muzzle face. Touch off on the uh, original surface and zero, just to have a target kind of go to go to. Of a file. 
red and sharp edges is created. For uh, internal crown there, so I'm just gonna set set up for the uh, bit of a crown there. Let's do a recessed, maybe. Yeah, I think a recessed crown would be nice, and then that'll give me the opportunity to cut this whatever that is out of there. Let's see here. We want. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, maybe 60,000 depth, and then about a half inch width. Take 10 real quick. Sorry, I'm going to have to get my head in the way. For about a half inch diameter and about a one sixteenth depth. Okay. Let's keep this up till we got about a sixteenth inch depth. on my way out here. And a little bit to that, and then feed out. Perfect. Okay, and then I'm gonna put a tiny damper on the inside there. Got to spin the leg that way. They soak up language from their daily experiences, which are often filled with parents and caregivers. So, you gotta be real careful not to take too much off. Break the edge. Yeah, so make it. I love that. I love how that happens. So yeah, that was freaking great. Okay, uh, I did chamfer that. So now just to polish a little bit, and also what children really experience to formulate better theories. And so about a decade ago, yeah, let's give it a sixty degree on the inside. Meaning, we get something like that. This chamfer, this I can tell that's sharp. There's probably some burrs right there. So let's do a sixty on that surface. Um, 
myself. 60 this degrees. Is study up or not. Um, <laughs> that is. So, I mean, what would it look like if I was looking at this baby with a camera? 60 hours. <laughs> No snag in there. I mean, to be clear, we aren't saying that yeah, this is perfect. necessarily... And there's the muzzle end. I put a recessed crown in there. And then re -blued the steel. It doesn't match, obviously, but it's better than just bare steel. All right, so I just made a few passes with the file there just to see. And it's pretty clear where the existing cut was um, in relation to the new sleeve that's in there right now. So, yeah, we're just going to cut that. Basically, right there, it's kind of hard to see that, but uh, that, needs to, that needs to go away right there. All right, so I just got a old single cut file here with the... Uh, filing edge on the edge as well, so that it's almost the right width. So I'm just gonna be careful not to touch either side. I don't wanna widen this notch or biff it if I can avoid doing that. So the file is actually skinnier than that notch. So I'm going to try to go right down the middle and then I'll use some needle files to kind of walk it over. Um, this is all this is for is for that extractor to be able to grip the case properly. This barrel steel is kind of hard. And yes, I know files only cut in the forward direction. I'm just keeping my file in there so I don't slip off. Do anything stupid. That is close, not quite there. Finish. This a needle file. Yeah. 
that shit out will do it. And I've got a little square file I can use to just touch up that bottom surface. Trying to maintain the same angle too. Okay, looks like we're down to the original surface. So there, just clearance for the extractor. Okay, one more shot of this before I screw it back on. I've uh, obviously re-blued it. <clears throat> Just a little cold blue. Uh, come on, buddy. There we go. So, again, just a clearance cut for the extractor to grab the room in the case. Um, I just followed the original material uh, and geometry of the barrel. So, let's see. <clears throat> All right, back in the vise, got this uh, leveled, and it's favoring the left side of the line. And a little bit more on the receiver, and check. A little more, there we go. Okay, those two are lined back up. Now, check the test around. Yep, there we go. There we go. That's what you want to see. So the extractor itself is flush when it closes and it's grabbing the case very positively and pulling it way out as it should. Perfect. All right, that part's done. Now Crystal gets to put it all back together. <laughs> okay, and then one other thing might be need to show. Uh, in this case, I really didn't need going no-go gauges for this job because we already had the original breech face to work with. And being a rimmed cartridge, it actually head spaces off of the rim right there. So this particular breech does not have a cut for that rim. All, the, all it does is sit on the outside. Um, but you can still check. Um, headspace. So we've got a go gauge and a no go gauge. And for those unfamiliar with these and rifles or any firearm, uh, basically you've got a breech system with, with some kind of bolt and a chamber that accommodates the cartridge. You want the go gauge, everything to close on that in terms of like locking up into battery, meaning it's within specifications for headspace for safe and proper operation. So you would take the go gauge, <clears throat> so you would take it, feed it into the chamber, close your bolt or breech block in this case, and then you take a locking block, it doesn't have to be both, but one of the two, which uh, go into here as you close the bolt. bolt. Yeah, as you close the lever, that is, the, the lever levers it <laughs> literally into battery and then these locking blocks come up and lock everything so there's one on either side and that prevents in the case of a catastrophic failure that prevents the bolt from blowing back and going through your skull so good feature to have there um so one way you close it and then you feed one of these one of the two of the locking blocks up and as long as so you can see this one's loose or f free <clears throat> so that's what you want to see on a go gauge. And then conversely, <clears throat> with a no-go, I'm going to close it. And then sometimes you can actually visually see, like on the back here, that bolt isn't actually flush with the frame. So that's telling you this isn't actually closed all the way. And one final way to check is, again, just feed the locking block up. And in this case, that's as far up as it'll go. 
So that's not closing. So we know that's within the maximum of where that chamber is going to be. The go gauge shows you the minimum clearance. And then this is obviously more than maximum because it won't close. And now it's, I got stuck up in there. <laughs> so I'll take a piece of wooden dowel and just kind of tap it out. So that shows you that that is definitely within, still within safe headspace tolerance. I'm going to cover my butt with that and also just something might be neat to show. Okay, so we know this gun is safe once more for firing. So we just got to put it all back together and then we'll go out and shoot. Test it out. All right, we got it all back together again. Uh, function, function check passes, everything's working as it should. Uh, we even still have this half cock and there's no hammer push off. Not that there ever was before, but it's good things to check. So, really the only thing left to do, go and shoot it. So that's what we're gonna go do. Okay, I think I uh, showed this earlier, but the customer provided some test fire rounds. Uh, definitely a nice old box of uh, Western. <laughs> Western X, center fire rifle cartridges. Uh, they actually look factory, so that's what we got to use, so that's what we're going to use. Um, so there's nothing in the in the chamber right now. So I'm just going to load up in case anybody has not seen this before. All the old timers know how to do this, but some of the new kids might not. So this is referred to as the loading gate for obvious reasons. And then all the rounds are getting fed up into this tube. And this, nothing is loaded into the chamber until we work the lever. All right, here we are at our test fire range. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and shoot this, uh, make sure it cycles and functions. And uh, hopefully the accuracy has improved a little bit, uh, which it surely should be. I want to save these cases for the customers. That's why I'm watching where they're going. So far, so good. Very low recoil. <laughs> wow that's a fun gun that's very very pleasant to shoot very low recoil um i i was hitting the exact same spot on the, those steel targets it's amazing i mean just like one hole every, <laughs> every shot yeah right so um for open sights and iron sights from what my customer was describing, is shooting much, much more accurately. I'm sure he'll be very, very pleased with this. Um, like I said, it's fun. Usually these are in 30-30, which is a pretty easy round to shoot too, but uh, yeah, so it's the first time I've ever shot a 25-20 Winchester. Um, so reliving some old history here, bringing this gun back. Uh, it should have plenty of, plenty of life left in it now. Uh, so yeah, very fun job, barrel liner complete, and this is going to go back to the customer. So uh, that wraps up this one. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, please 
Uh, if you like the video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Uh, hit the subscribe if you want to be uh, notified of other videos and future, future stuff coming out for us. Uh, there's also that bell notification thing. So do all the, do all the deeds for the YouTubes and uh, leave a comment. I'd like to hear what you guys think. Um, uh, like I mentioned earlier, if you got an old Winchester like this, you might want to look at the bore because uh, it may be time to, to reline this uh, barrel. All right. So again, thank you, Jeff, with Accurate Rifles and Restorations. Over and out.